Good afternoon, my name is Marcos Perez. I'm a storage specialist a solutions architect with AWS Data Protection. And now we are going to cover a quick demo around AWS Backup, so you can see some of the aspects discussed today on the real life on a AWS console. So let's start with the AWS console here. So as you can see, I'm uh, on the AWS Backup dashboard where you can take a quick look around all the jobs that are running, so have an overview of how it starts. So when backup admin administrators are using AWS Backup, uh, there are a, a set of tasks that they have to cover even before they start protecting anything, right? So they have to think about how they prepare the environment to start protecting. And the very first step to do that is defining which services we will protect. As mentioned before, AWS Backup is covering uh, 17 different services plus VMware on-premises and on cloud. And that's where you can select which services you want to deploy or uh, activate for your account. The second job is to make sure that you have where you save your backups, and that's the vaults. As you can see here, I have a list of vaults. So going over vaults again, vaults is that logical repository where the backups are saved to. Think about it like a virtual uh, uh, repository where all your recovery points will be saved. The idea of having this repository is twofold. One is simplicity, because you can create multiple vaults and organize your backups in a ways that will uh, make sense to your business. The second reason is security. Instead of having access to the storage underneath, and I heard questions here today uh, around what storage or the durability of the storage. Yes, the storage underneath is there. We are not exposing any APIs out of that storage. We can guarantee you that's uh, 11 uh, uh, nines of durability and all, but everything is through the vault. The vault is the abstraction layer that will allow you to access the vault. So for security reasons, we have the vault. And when you open the vault here in the list, you can see that not just the recovery points are here, listed here, all different recovery points I have available, but also I have my security aspect here. So I define access policies related to that vault. So I can define who has access. And in the, in the level of the organization, organization unit, user, role, so you can basically define any type of uh, uh, allow and deny access to your vaults. That's how you do that. Uh, so I just mentioned three, uh, two aspects that you have to have in place, right? Settings, where you define the services and the vaults. The third one, and that's quite important because that's the heart of your data protection strategy, is the backup plan. I have a, a motto, always have a backup plan. So when you're using AWS backup, you want to have that backup plan in place. So how you do that? Uh, on the backup plan session, as you can see, I have multiple backup plans created here. What is a backup plan? So backup plan is the container where you define everything about your data protection strategy. The frequency of your backups, the retention of your backups, where you're saving those recovery points. If you are copying that recovery point somewhere else, another, another region, another account. So you have the possibility to create all those uh, inputs on you creating a backup plan. So I'll go over here to create a new backup plan. You can use one of our templates to help you guiding some frequencies. You can define by a JSON if you have a set of definitions pre-written pre on JSON or you can build a plan from scratch. You give it a name, so you start giving your backup plan a name. And the backup plan is just a container where you have multiple rules. So first, you create the first rule, at least one rule has to be present, so you have a backup plan, so I'll create a rule here. And it's at the rule section that you create, define where the backups will be saved to, so my list of vaults is here, I can see one of the vaults. Uh, I also can define the frequency of my backup, so it's uh, every hour, uh, twice a day, and that's kind of the difference. So think about one of the questions we had here earlier about, oh, so snapshots and, and that's backup. What, what's the difference then? Is backup and snapshots on the EBS, for example, the same thing? That's the difference. We have an orchestration layer over that. So we are reusing the mechanism on EBS, on RDS. We create some mechanisms for EFS. But at the end of the day, what we have here is an orchestration layer over that uh, mechanism. And that orchestration layer will also allow you to define when your backups will occur. Define the backup window. We don't want to overlap that with your production data because we want to make sure that you're taking backup certain time of the day. That's 
business as usual for everyone that's dealing with backup uh, data center, cloud, no matter where. Uh, next thing, you can define the life cycle of the data. So for some services, we support uh, transition to cold storage. So services that we have control over the data plan, we implemented a way of moving data to that cold storage. So you can do that, define how long you want to retain the data before moving that data to a cold storage with, with a different price, of course, and then the retention overall. So how, how long I need that data to be there. Once you define uh, this aspect, you have a backup plan that will open a backup plan that I have in place here already. So this is a backup plan where I created three rules, a daily, a monthly, and a weekly rule. And then the next step on the backup plan is to assign resource. So that's where the backup administrator will say, okay, which resource I want to protect with my AWS backup plan, with the backup plan that I'm right now. So you do that in two ways. When you click assign resource, you can define resource by their names, all of them or some of them. So you can go here and go with specific resource. Let's say, for example, that I'm creating this backup plan because I, uh, my, my, my database administrator asked me to do, the, do that. So I will select my RDS instances here and I can see the list of all the instances available. I can select all of them, some of them. I can exclude, so I can select, for example, all of them, but I want to exclude specific instances from my backup. So that's one way that you can do that, the resource assignment. And the second way is not or, is and, because you can combine both, is through tags. And that's quite common. That's how you see customers doing more because you can leverage multiple tags, multiple hmm. uh, different metadata about your environment, about your resource. And then we use that to create your backup plans. So for example, here, I would say something like, okay, backup equals, to certain SLA, for example, gold. So I'm defining that this backup plan will affect any resource. Right now, not any, because I'm, I'm just selecting RDS, but if I put here, all resource in my account that has the tag backup equals to gold. Automatically, when I assign this, uh, the, the resource will be uh, protected by this backup plan. We have here another, another rule in place already. You can create multiple resource assignments. So if you, see, if you take a look here, I have uh, production equals to <coughs> backup tier equals to gold. So that's the way I define the tags for this backup plan. Once I do that, automatically my resource will be protected. How can I check if the, the resource has been protected indeed? So, you can follow the jobs that are running through the job session. So here you have all the backup, restore, and copy jobs that you have in place. And then you can click and open to see details about it. Um, okay, so now I, I have my, my resource protected. I know that they are uh, uh, there. So next, next thing that might happen is something, some event, some... Uh, um, accidental deletion, something happened to my data and I need to restore that data. So how the backup administrator or even the user, if they have the proper permission, how can they restore the data? So you go to the protected resource where you can see everything that's protected on your account. You can filter, you can uh, search for specific resource. So for example, here I have database one is my RDS that was accidental, uh, accidentally deleted. So when I select that, that recovery point, uh, I can see that I have multiple pointing times. So basically this backup is being protected by a, a backup plan that's taking backups every hour, as you can see here. So I can select the latest one. Or for example, I know that exact point in time that I want to restore, I can select another one. When you select the point in time, all you have to do is click restore. Easy like that. Um, you notice that every time that you're restoring a resource, you have a different experience because different resources, has, they have different parameters, right? So since I'm restoring a database here, of course, I'll have database information to fill. So I, I define which instance type, uh, availability, settings, network, backup, protection, everything related to that uh, instance. And quite important, the name that I'll give because this is going to be a new provision and instance. So I'll put here, for example, restore, and I'll put the local time that is 4.57 p.m. And then I'll click restore. 
backup. With that done, automatically I'll go to the job session and you can see the restore jobs that this is pending and it's running a, a process will restore that database. If I quickly go over my RDS, my RDS environment here, I'll be able to see that that instance that I just started the restore is already being provisioning on the database list. So if I go to the database here, you can see here, restore 547 5, 5, 5, 5, p.m. It's still creating, so I'm in the process of creation, but uh, the process of restore is already in place. So that's how easy it is to restore a backup from AWS backup. The next thing that I would like to show you, although that I have just a couple of minutes, so I want to show you how uh, Backup Audit Manager works. So remember that uh, you saw before the concept of Backup Audit Manager, where you can create a framework that will protect, not protect, but uh, advise you about your posture in terms of compliance. That's what you do when you create a framework. So when you go to Backup Audit Manager, you have three steps to do. First of all, since we are reusing AWS config to go over those components, you have to enable uh, 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 AWS config to your AWS backup uh, resource. So once you do that, you're ready to go. So you can create what we call a framework. When you're creating a framework, basically this framework will represent some type of in, uh, uh, um, some type of compliance or requirement, governance requirement that you have in place. For example, FINRA, HIPAA, so you name it. So you, you put, the, for example, here, a certain work frame that you want to create, and then you have all those nine controls that you have in place. Now it's nine, we are creating more and more controls, so the idea is to have controls here that you sh give uh, the customers possibility to create the proper framework. Once you do that, once you define all your compliance, your controls, then you can go over your framework and see how it, uh, it's your environment in terms of posture. So we can see here, for example, for minimum retention, I have more than 25 resources that are not compliant. So I have to go over those resources and make sure that they are. I can go over to the, the, the details of those resources through AWS config, or I can use the last component that I would like to show, that's the reporting. As you can see here, I'm creating um, daily reports for all my compliance controls. I can go over those reportings. I have here uh, details about everything that's being uh, monitored by my frameworks. Uh, I was directed mm -hmm. to the uh, bucket, uh, to the S3 bucket where my reports are stored. And as you can see here, when I open that report, there you go. So now I have a list of all my research and how, are, how, how they are being uh, compliant or not compliant with the regulation that I created. So this is, in a nutshell, how you define a framework and a compliance report around your AWS backup. Uh, with that said, thank you so much for your time. I hope that was useful. And feel free to go over uh, how AWS backup is simple to protect multiple resources within AWS services. Thank you.